Hello, everyone. This is the lecture for section 3.1, Integration by Parts. Okay, so um, we're going to start our study in chapter three. Um, we did chapter one. That was a sort of like a review of the construction of integration. Uh, chapter two was a sort of like a uh, an application of integration uh, for you know various volumes and shapes and you know some stuff in physics and some some stuff in our physical world, right? Uh, chapter three is going to be the first bit of study uh, toward techniques for solving more complex uh, integrals. Okay, the very first one that we're going to do is integration by parts. Okay. Um, so like I said, this is one of the techniques. We're going to be doing a number of techniques uh, for how to solve an integral, OK? Um, and these are all techniques. You can pull them out and use them, right, uh, whenever you see fit, whenever um, an integral sort of meets sort of certain conditions or, you know, it, it's like sort of like, a, you know, it's one of the many tricks that you have in your hat, right, OK? Uh, so the first uh, bit that we're gonna do here is I just want everybody to just start up uh, with doing some good old U substitution. Nothing fancy. The the integrals that are below are a bunch of uh, integrals that are uh, just using U substitution from way back from section 1.5. So if you need to go review that, uh, go ahead and do so and then come back and do all of these, okay? Um, and the reason why I'm going to have you guys do U substitution here is because this is sort of like a, a U substitution is one of our techniques, right? And moreover, what's going to end up happening is uh, these techniques, right? They're going to have U substitutions within them, okay? Um, so just go back, uh, go ahead and review. These should be pretty quick. Um, I made them as, I don't want to say as straightforward as possible, but uh, pretty close to it, okay? So uh try these out and if you got questions on them you know hit me up okay so now let's go ahead and get into integration by parts by itself okay so suppose we had this function right here right uh f of x is equal to x squared times sine x right let's say we had that function right there uh by the product rule Right, because if I wanted to take the derivative of this, right, I'd need to use product rule. The product rule tells me that my derivative is going to be this right here. So it's going to be that uh, first times the derivative of the second plus the derivative of the first times the second. It's the mix there, right? Okay. So we know that if f of x is x squared sine x, right, our derivative has to be that 2x sine x plus x squared cosine x, right? Now, what we've learned up to now is that if um, if I have a differentiation, right, then the integration sort of undoes it, almost, right, with a difference of a value plus c, right? So uh, integration and differentiation, right, taking an integral and then taking the derivative should be sort of opposite uh, operations of each, other, of each other, right? Sort of like when if you add something, right? Uh, you subtract it in order to get rid of it, right? If you square something, you take the square root to get rid of it, right? So if we take the integral of f of x, f prime of x dx, right? If we take the integral, then the integral and the derivative should disappear, right? So then that means I'm taking the the integral, sorry, of this thing, right? And like I said, since the integral and derivatives are opposites, we should get f of x back which is this right here, differing by a constant value c, right? And it turns out the above, right, uh, the above uh, statement uh, is true. The, the statement that I have highlighted in yellow there, it is true, right? However, the hard part is this, that you guys see this thing right here? it's really hard to see that that is the product rule, right, going backwards, right? Um, so that in itself is the impetus for this integration by parts. It is essentially going backwards uh, for the part product rule, 
Okay. So let me go ahead and introduce uh, the theorem itself, integration by parts. So let u be f of x, v be g of x, right? Uh, let two uh, let them be two functions that are continuous, right? That have continuous derivatives. Then the integration by parts formula is this right here: u dv is equal to u v minus v du. Okay. This is essentially uh, the backwards, if you uh, if you will. Uh, this is the backwards way of uh, sort of undoing a product rule. Okay. So the problem is this, that notice that we have a u and a v, right? So when we do an integration by parts, we have to choose our u and our v, okay? Now, the natural question that comes out of that is, well, how do we choose u and how do we choose v? How do I know if I'm choosing one correctly and not the other one correctly, right? Okay, and the way that we resolve that is by using this acronym. L-I-A-T-E, or li eight. okay? Everybody learns this for Calc 2, okay? Um, and what the acronym does is it allows, it'll give you sort of like the best choice for you, okay? It'll give you the best choice for whatever you should be, okay? So I made this table here to sort of signify what's supposed to be chosen for what, right? So the higher on the list, right, uh, the better the choice for you, right? The lower, the worse the choice for you, okay? So the very best choice for anything to make it equal to you for integration by parts is anything that is a logarithmic function. It doesn't matter which one, so it can be log base A or LN, right? That's the very first thing that you should go for uh, to let you equal that, okay? Next one is inverse trig function. So anything arc sine or cosine inverse or tangent inverse, that's going to be your choice for you. That's going to be the best choice for you. Okay. A, the third one is algebraic functions. Okay. Anything that has a polynomial, including a rational function, right? So, you know, polynomial over polynomial, a rational function. If you have anything that looks like that in your, uh, uh, in your problem, that's going to be the best choice for you, okay? Next one down is trigonometric functions. If you have anything, sine of stuff, cosine of stuff, secant of stuff, tangent of stuff, right? Then that's going to be your next best choice, okay? And last, absolute, I want to, well, yeah, the worst that you can choose for you, right? is exponential function. So, and it doesn't matter which kind of exponential function you're talking about, uh, either e to the stuff or a to the stuff, right? It doesn't matter which one, just anything that looks exponential is the worst thing to choose for you, okay? Now, uh, why do we do it this way? Uh, one, L-I-A-T-E is usually a pretty useful acronym to remember um, in order to do integrals just in general, okay? Uh, but there is another reason for it, okay? And you'll see in the process when we do it, I haven't shown you guys a process yet. I haven't shown you guys an example, but once I do an example, you'll see what I'm talking about here, that uh, what we need you to do, what we need uh, our substitution you to do, right, is that under differentiation, hopefully somehow, some way, that function, that type of function sort of disappears, okay? Uh, so that's why I say here that uh, the order provided by our acronym, L-I-A-T-E, will produce the quickest reduction under differentiation, <clears throat> okay? So what does that mean uh, in terms of, like, let's take a logarithmic function, right? Uh, the second you take the derivative of, of a logarithmic function, right, it's going to be 1 over whatever that is. The logarithm disappears, okay? You see what I'm saying? Right, inverse trigonometric functions, those are the same. Those are a mixture of one over the square roots of one plus x squared or something, right? The second you start taking uh, the derivatives of tan inverse and cosine inverse, right? Those, you know, Wonko uh, inverse trig functions, they disappear, right? Make sense? 
the next one down, right? Algebraic functions, we know that, let's say you had an x to the fifth, right? You take the derivative of it, it's going to be x to the fourth. The next time down, it's going to be x to the third. The next time down after that, x squared, OK? That's what I mean by reduction, that if you had an algebraic function, you're at the will of the power of whatever you know uh, polynomial that you're messing with, OK? So that's usually uh, the best way to sort of describe why we have to use L-I-A-T-E. OK. OK, so now let me get into an example of how to use this. OK, so let's say we have right here, let's say we have to evaluate this integral right here, x times cosine of x. First of all, I want everybody to notice that what we have here, we cannot use u substitution. Our, our run of the mill section 1.5 u substitution, we cannot use it here. Right. So we have to figure out something else. Right. And this is where we're going to use uh, integration by parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first start by classifying whatever I have here, right? And I have two things here. I have, make sure that that's the, oh, nope. there we go. I just needed a little thinner. That, and then I have a cosine of x. OK. So the cosine of x, that is a trig function right? And x, right? That is an algebraic function. So I have my sort of classification down. I have an algebraic function times a trig function. According to L-I-A-T-E, right? My u should be that algebraic function. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So uh, here goes the process. Hopefully you guys are uh, ready to write this down. So as L-I-A-T-E states, I have to let u be that algebraic function. So u is going to be x. Everything else is going to be dv. So the, everything else is the cosine of x dx. OK, now I need now uh, du. OK, so if I take the derivative of uh, u equals x, right, uh, then I get dx as the derivative here, right? And in this column, I'm going to go backwards. I need v. So that means I am going to integrate both sides. OK, so what did that do? The integral of the left-hand side is going to give me my v. The integral of cosine of x dx, if you guys remember that from, um, uh, from calc 1, right? The integral of cosine is positive sine. OK, so I'm going to write it right here. Integral u dv is equal to is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du, just just as a reference. I'm going to start plugging in all of this stuff according to what I see here. OK, so the integral of u dv, so I have here a u. Let me actually write this here. Uh, let's go ahead and use our light blue. I have a u and a dv, right? Is equal to u v x sine x minus the integral of v times du, which is dx. So now notice what happened, right? This is now x sine x minus the integral of sine x. And the integral of sine x, if you remember that one from, uh, from uh, calc 1, right? That is going to be ooh, negative cosine x. OK, and this simplifies to x sine x plus cosine of x. And I forgot a plus C at the end, since this is an indefinite integral. So my f of x, right? Actually, let me do it this way. The integral of x cosine of x dx is equal to x sine x plus cosine x plus C. 
and we are done. Okay. Now, just for kicks and giggles, we said basically, right? So the idea here is we took the integral of this thing and we got this, correct? So it stands to reason, right, that if I take the derivative of this, I should get this back. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, if my f of x is equal to x sine x plus cos cosine of x plus c, right? then f prime of x, notice what's going to happen here is I need to take the derivative of this. And in particular, this portion right here is going to require a product rule, right? So the derivative of this is going to be uh, the first times the derivative of the second, right? So x times the derivative of sine, which is cosine of x, right? Plus, let me make that nicer plus here. So the first times the derivative of the second plus the derivative of the first times the second, right? So it's going to be the derivative of uh, x is 1 times the derivative of sine, which is uh, cosine of x. This is a reminder. Take out the garbage. This is a reminder. <laughs> Take out the garbage. Isn't that great? You guys heard Alexa remind me to uh, take out the garbage. Garbage goes out tomorrow. Okay, let's let me do this again. Uh, derivative of the that got me out of whack. Okay, let's try this again. The derivative of the first times the second. So uh, that's going to be one. Let me do it this way times the second, so sine of x, plus the first times the derivative of the second, so x times the derivative of the sine is uh, cosine of x, right? Plus the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine of x, plus the derivative of a constant value, that's going to be plus 0, right? Let me clean this up a little bit. So it's going to be sine of x plus x cosine x minus sine of x. And then the plus zero is there, so I can just get rid of it. But we see here there's a plus sine x and a minus sine x. So all of this is equal to x cosine x. So there we go. We checked it. OK. And that is the process in and of itself for uh, if you are unsure of if you did your integral correctly, right, uh, take the derivative of it. It should be the original thing that was in the integral sign, right, because that is equal to that. Okay, let's do one more. <laughs> So let's go ahead and do this next example, OK? Uh, I am going to have to do something here. And this is completely valid for anyone to do, OK? I'm going to do a rewrite. It's going to be 2x times e to the minus x dx, OK? That is completely valid to do. You can use it whenever you need to. OK, but the reason why I did that is because now I have a multiplication. I can go ahead and do my classification like I did with the example up above. OK, so we know that this right, the 2x is that's an algebraic type of thing. Right. And then we have e to the minus x. That is an exponential type of thing. Right. And that so that exponential thing. Right. According to our acronym, L-I-A-T-E, is the worst thing we can make for you. So we have to use uh, we have to make our u equal to that algebraic term, that 2x, right? And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to say u has to be equal to the 2x. Everything else has got to be dv. So it's going to be e to the minus x dx, OK? If I take the derivative of this, I'll get du to 
D oops, two DX. Okay. And in order for me to get V here, right, I have to integrate both sides. And that will get me minus E to the minus X. Okay. Once I have this done, right, I can go back to integration by parts and start filling in the stuff. So this is going to be equal to U V. So two X times negative E to the minus X minus the integral of V minus E to the minus X times DU, which is two DX. Okay, clean it up a little bit. Minus two X E to the minus X minus the integral. And it won't be a minus anymore because I have a negative and a negative and I forgot something here. Uh, there's a two out in the back. I can pull that out front. So it's gonna be positive now, two integral E to the minus X DX. Okay, using U substitution on this tail, right? Because you already did it, that was this bit. We have a solution for this already. It's gonna be minus two X E to the minus X minus two E to the minus X plus C. And we are done. Here is our final answer. So what I wanna do now, right? Like I said, this a good double check is if you, to find out if you did your integral appropriately and correct, correctly, right? Is you take the derivative of it and it should be what was in the integrand before, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and say like, if f of x is that thing right there, minus two x e to the minus x, minus two e to the minus x plus c. And if I take my derivative of x with respect to x, right? I should get the thing that I had from before. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And notice in order for us to take this derivative, right? This portion right here is gonna require the product rule. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and do the derivative of this. So the derivative of negative two X, right? Is going to be negative two. So it's gonna be the derivative of the first times the second. So times E to the minus X plus the first minus two X times the derivative of uh, times the derivative of the second, right? So minus E to the minus X, right? Minus right here, right? Two, two times the derivative of uh, two E to the minus X. Right, and the derivative of e to the minus x, that's gonna be negative e minus x. If you uh, don't remember that, go back to uh, to your notes from Calc 1, and you're gonna to need to review the chain rule. That, in particular, is requiring a chain rule, right? So now, let's clean this up a little bit. Minus two e to the minus x plus two x negative two x, right, uh, times e Let's go ahead and clean up here. We have a negative and a negative. So those two cancel each other out. So you just have left two X E to the minus X. And then over here you have plus two E to the minus X. And if you guys notice a minus two E to the X, a plus two E to the minus X, those go away. And I got left with two X E to the minus X. Okay, and it, like I said, turned out that derivative is that thing, right? Well, it's actually this thing right here, but it's the rewrite, okay? So uh, I want everybody to try out integration by parts using these two, okay? Uh, these should work out normal. There shouldn't be anything out of the ordinary for these. Okay, try them out. Okay, now I want to do this one. Okay, um, 
because of the because of the sort of like the Pandora's box that this opens up by doing integration by parts. Okay. Um, it turns out that um, because we know uh, integration by parts now, right? Uh, it opens up uh, other integrals, right? Uh, and other techniques. And, and these are not, and, and the techniques that I'm talking about here, besides integration by parts, are just mathematical tricks that are just up your sleeve. Okay. And this is one of them. Okay. Uh, I would go ahead and contend that even though we're going to use integration by parts for this one, right? Um, even though we're going to use integration by parts for this one, uh, very few of you will be able to figure it out without seeing the trick that lies behind it. Okay. And believe me, this one sort of racked my brain pretty good for a good hour. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started with it. I am going to still do integration by parts. Okay. And as usual, I'm going to go ahead and uh, classify uh, what I see. Right. So I have this thing right here. Let me draw it. Let me underline it nicer. Okay. And there's, I'm going to, I, I, you guys hopefully remember there's supposed to be a, there's that invisible one that's there, right? So we have an invisible one there as well, right? So what we have here is this, I have a logarithmic term and that one constitutes an arithmetic term, right? So according to L-I-A-T-E, according to our acronym, uh, we need to make that ln of 1 plus x squared, that's going to be our u, okay? And we are going to go through the motions, okay? So here we go. Uh, u is going to be the ln of 1 plus x squared, right? And then everything else is going to be dv. In this case, it's just going to be dv is 1 dx. I'm just going to write dx, okay? du is going to be 2x over 1 plus x squared dx. If you, uh, if you need to uh, figure out how to do this derivative, it's a chain rule uh, using the ln rule, OK? And then if I integrate both sides over here, right, this is going to produce v is equal to x. So from here, I'm off to the races, OK? Uh, it's going to be uv minus the integral v du, so u v x ln 1 plus x squared minus the integral of v x times du, right, which is going to be 2x 1 plus x squared dx. I'm going to clean this up a little more. x ln 1 plus x squared minus 2 times the integral x squared over 1 plus x squared. OK? OK, here's the thing that really hurt my brain, OK? and I have to show you these. These are, I, I call them cheap parlor tricks uh, just because it they look so, they look so cheap to do really, all right? Um, so let me, uh, let me just go ahead and write it out. I'm gonna be in particular looking at this integral right here, okay? So I'm gonna break that aside. I'm gonna go over here. So the integral of x squared over, 1 plus x squared dx. This is completely valid, OK? Uh, 1 plus x squared minus 1 over 1 plus x squared. So notice that I added and subtracted 1 on the top. So I changed nothing, right? But in doing so, I get this, right? 
uh, I can associate however I need to 1 plus x squared minus 1 over 1 plus x squared, right? Integral. one minus one over one plus x squared. So all I'm doing is breaking up my fraction over the denominator over specific associated terms. Does that make sense? Okay. So then now I have to do this integral, right? So I have the integral of one dx minus the integral of one over one plus x squared dx. The integral of 1 dx, that is going to just be x, minus, this should look familiar, the second term right here should look familiar, that is uh, tan inverse of x. So this integral is equal to this right here. Okay, so that means that my final integral here is going to be x ln 1 plus x squared minus 2 times this integral, which we know the answer to. Plus c. one plus x squared minus 2x minus uh, plus 2 tan inverse x plus c. And we are done. OK. Now, this one's going to be a little harder for me to uh, double check. But you can go ahead and trust me that it works. So if I take the derivative of this thing highlighted in green, I should get this back. OK. Now, like I said, knowing how to do integration by parts sort of opens up Pandora's box when it comes to a lot of the other integrals. This is just one of them, okay? You have no idea how badly I got like ticked off because of this portion right here, okay? And this is just one of the many variations of the sort of the outside, thinking outside of the box that happens when you have integration by parts, all right? So, uh, and that's what I want to sort of segue into this one right here, okay? Uh, this is another quick check for everybody, okay? Uh, both of these are going to open up using integration by parts, okay? Uh, for the ones in the odds over here, okay, you're going to do integration by parts once. You're going to reduce some stuff, right? And then you're going to need to do integration by parts again or the second integral that shows up in your um, uh, in your computations. Okay, so this the the one for the odds. Uh, you guys are going to have to do uh, integration by parts twice, and that sometimes happens. Sometimes happens. Okay, and for uh, the evens. Okay, uh, for the evens, what's going to end up happening is. If you take, so you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to try to do integration by parts twice. And what's going to happen is you're just going to keep sort of canceling yourself out, canceling yourself out, canceling yourself out, right? But what you need to do in order to stop canceling yourself out, right, when you do this problem, is we're going to use some trig. You're going to need this expression, okay? And by using this expression along with the integration by parts that you do the first time, right, uh, you're going to reduce uh, the statement uh down to something uh, nicer right in uh, to a point where you can manipulate the expression back and forth okay the, the, both of these are fairly difficult make sure you keep a track of everything okay um write down every step if you need to like you know on your paper bar stuff away uh separate stuff away do so all right OK, so uh, moving on now, OK, um, now that we know how to do integration by parts, right, 
we need uh, the expression for how to solve something under integration by parts, right? And that is ex essentially this right here, right? So the process is still the same, completely the same, right? Uh, but let's say you want it over an interval A to B, yeah? Then it's gonna be from A to B uh, minus the integral from A to B. You basically just plug in everything as you know to do, right? So uh, that brings us down to our next example down here, okay? Um, let's say we wanted to find the volume of the shape modeled by cosine of x from zero to power two rotated over the y axis, okay? Using the shell method. So if you guys remember shell method, uh, that's the one with the cylindrical shells, right? So soda cans, okay? So the first thing I wanna do is, let me scroll down a little bit. I wanna go ahead and draw this shape that's gonna be generated, yeah? So I'm gonna go ahead and insert draw shape. I'm gonna slap down an X and a Y, wrong color, look at me go. Okay, and then I'm gonna do another shape, another, there we go. Yeah, that's close enough. Okay, so, uh, we know that this is going to be our shape here, right? So actually, let me move this up a little bit. And right there, so it looks good. I'm going to reduce the size of this one up. Uh, I think we lost it. Okay. Let's try it again. There we go, and I wanted the black ink. There we go, all right. So we got it back. So my shape, as we can see it from above, right? It's gonna go up to one, and then it's gonna go over here to pi over two, pi over two, negative pi over two, right? And my shape sort of is that hump from cosine, right? It's gonna be sort of like, that, right? So there's my shape. And like I said, it's rotated around the uh, the y-axis, right? So this is spinning this way, like this, right? Okay, so the drawing for this shape is gonna look something like this. This is sort of like the shape that we're gonna be playing around with here. Picture like a mound of dirt, this time for real, a mound of dirt, right? In the shape of cosine. Okay, there we go. So now let's go ahead and draw one of our representative shapes for cosine or for uh, for the cylindrical shell method, right? And that's going to look like something like this, right? Uh, here's one of our shells right here. Actually, I need to make that a little thicker there provide some thickness right there and then right here about right so you guys notice this here is one of our cylindrical shells so if you're still a little unsure about your cylindrical shell method uh go back in the notes it's all there if you have questions, drop me a line, yeah? So now, if you guys remember the formula for cylindrical shells, right? That is going to be uh, the integral, right? From A to B, two pi x times f of x, right, dx. Where this right here, this right here was sort of like, the volume of this cylindrical shell. And we're talking about the soda can, remember that? Let me actually redraw that one. It looks to be a little, there we go. Okay, it is the volume, right, of the uh, thickness of the soda can, right? And that is, if you guys remember, right, two pi times the radius, this bit right here, that was, x and then the height right was defined by f of x 
that's where we get x times f of x, right? So we're off to the races at this point for this one, right? So it's going to be the integral from 0 to pi over 2. 2 pi times x times my function itself, cosine of x, OK? Now, uh, 2 pi, that is a constant value. That pops out front, right? Uh, integral, oh, sorry, 2 pi, integral from 0 to pi over 2 of x times cosine of x dx. Whoops, dx. Since we know that the thickness of my soda can, right, that is going to be my dx. You guys remember that, right? All right. This is great because if you guys remember from the very first example, we've already done this integral. This integral right here required uh, integration by parts, right? So it's going to be equal to 2 pi times. We know what the integral of this is, is x sine of x plus cosine of x evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. OK, I'm going to go ahead and expand this out. So it's going to be 2 pi times, I'm going to use big brackets here, of pi over 2. So pi over 2 times sine of pi over 2 plus cosine of pi over 2 minus 0 times sine of 0 uh plus cosine plus cosine of zero okay and if you reduce this all down two pi pi over two minus one and that is our answer so this is the volume of that shape that's right there to the right <clears throat> okay. So th this is what I want to say for um, integration by parts. It, like I said, it opens up uh, sort of Pandora's box to what we can handle. We can handle much, much more complex integrals from here on out. Okay. And that in itself brings up problems that, like you saw before, right? Uh, some integrals will require cheap parlor tricks, okay? Or will require you to use a uh, use substitution more than once, sometimes twice, okay? Um, I will say this, right? Uh, for all the problems from below, uh, I won't make you do it more than twice. Uh, I think above that is cruel and unusual punishment, okay? Um, so yeah, I believe... That is it for this section. From here on out, it's uh, lecture questions. So <clears throat> try these all out, OK? If you have problems with them, let me know. Drop me a line. Uh, send me an email, OK? Uh, besides that, I'm all done here. Happy studying.